This video is for my mom because my mom is constantly messaging me now being like, Maximus, I don't know which model to use. Do I use that ChatGPT 5 one or that Google one that just came out? Or I saw you made a video on perplexity or that Claude one you keep talking about. Which one do I use? It is so overwhelming. And mom, I get it. It is overwhelming. It's literally my job and I'm overwhelmed. Every week there is something new coming out and it's hard to keep up. And it kind of got me thinking that there's actually three different types of people. There's number one, the perfectionist. The perfectionist is someone who goes into every piece of documentation that comes out when a new model is dropped. They wanna know all the little things that they can adjust and change. They wanna know the things that will make the minute change in the result that they can get. This approach may get you better results, but it takes a lot of time. Then there's person number two, the wing it type user or my mother. Now, these are the people who probably don't know that the documentation exists. And even if they did, they wouldn't wanna read it. They just want to type in their prompt and hopefully get the best response possible. Now, the problem with this is, let's take ChatGPT 5 as an example. New model comes out, which means better results, right? Wrong. ChatGPT 5 actually gives you worse results if you don't know how to use it properly. You see, ChatGPT 5 was built for AI agents and developers in mind. ChatGPT 5 is better at critical, straightforward prompts. So that means if you give it vague prompts like you did with 4.0, 4.0 would actually have be given you better results compared to ChatGPT 5. If you didn't understand that, don't worry because I'm gonna cover it in more detail at the end. And the thing is, if you're person number two, you're gonna get worse results if new models keep coming out because you're not taking the time to read the docs. But if you're person number one, you're never gonna get time to actually prompt anything because you're spending so much time reading the docs. So you gotta be person number three, the meta prompter. This is the person who uses AI to actually prompt AI to get the best result. This is the person that I am now. I was firmly a number one. I was the nerd. I was the one in the docs all the time, the perfectionist. But I simply just don't have the time for this when models are changing so much. So I use these exact techniques to get the most out of it. So let's get straight into the video. Now I'm in a completely new ChatGPT account and I'm just gonna go ahead and type something in here. So I'll say, I'm preparing for a system design interview. I want you to pretend you're an interviewer and ask me questions, give me answers. Help me just get better at system design. Now I'll press enter and it's gonna give me probably a really fast result here. You can see that was pretty quick. And it asked me some standard questions. Doesn't really go in depth like I wanted it to. So I'm gonna copy this, start a new chat. And instead of pasting it in right away, I'm just gonna go slash prompt. Now you'll see, I output an entire prompt here and I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in at the bottom. Don't worry if you don't know what just happened, I'm gonna show you exactly how you can do that in a later step. So now I actually have some questions. I have things like, do you want a mock interview uh, to focus on classic system design interview questions? Uh, should I provide answers that should be hints or guidance? And do you want it to mimic live back and forth interview? So I can go ahead and answer those. I'll say, I want you to update this prompt. Please create the new prompt for me. So now I can go ahead and press enter. And what's gonna output is a in detail prompt that I can now enter into a new chat and this is gonna help me get the best possible results. So let me copy this. I'm gonna go into a new chat and I'm gonna paste this in, delete the bottom and press enter. Now, this is in a format that is really, really good. You can see right now, ChatGPT is thinking. It didn't do this before because we were just using the, the base model which was automatically selected for us. But now we get a lot more detail in our responses here from ChatGPT. And this is a way better response from ChatGPT that's actually gonna help us in our system design interview. Now, that was a lot of stuff happening. So let's take a step back and actually look at what was in that slash prompt. So we take a look at this prompt here. You're gonna see right away there's a role. If you've done any of our ChatGPT prompt engineering projects, which you can check out in the description below, you're gonna know some of these techniques that are used in this prompt here. There's an objective. Now the objective here is to accept natural language prompt and return an improved version using the latest public best practices for the specified provider. If browsing is enabled, consult official documentation to update best practices before editing. So what this is doing is it's actually going ahead and looking at the best practice documentation to help create the prompt. Then it's creating a checklist for the main steps. You have the provider, so you can choose which provider you're using, ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, or other providers as well. It has the date so that the AI knows what the date is currently. It also has some of the links that it can use, 
the specific output that it should be formatted in. There's rules as well. There is a lot that goes into this prompt, but it's actually not too long. There's not too much going on. It's quite simple to understand. Essentially, we've just created a prompt that at the bottom, we can speak in a natural language and it's gonna go ahead regardless of the provider we're using regardless of the time period we're using, it's going to go ahead and output the best particular format that it can for that prompt. This is meta prompting. It's even going to run checks against itself and evaluate the answer before it gives it to you. This is a lot more powerful than just speaking into or typing into a random prompt. We're gonna get way better answers as we've literally seen right here. Now, when do you actually use something like this? Because it definitely is overkill if you're doing simple tasks like asking what the time in France is, or translating from some, something from English to Spanish, or asking, is the guy on the screen good looking? Of course he is. You know, these are simple questions that ChatGPT and all providers are gonna know. So you don't wanna use this if you're looking at easy, simple tasks. It's just gonna waste time. Obviously it takes a little bit more time to be able to implement this specific technique. But for more complex tasks, it's gonna give you wildly better results. Now, for some of you probably wondering how I go slash prompt, and then I output this entire prompt. And it's actually super simple. I use a tool called Raycast, and it's a free tool on Mac. If you're on Windows, I'd recommend a tool called AutoHotKey. It's also free and pretty much does the exact same thing. So I can go to create snippet, and I'm gonna create a new, new command in here. So I'm gonna go slash writing. Let's say we want this to improve our writing and I pre-prepared a prompt before and this is gonna help my writing. I also have to add in a keyword. So for me, it's gonna be slash writing and that's the essentially what I should type in if I want this prompt to appear. So now I can go back to ChatGPT. Let's say I'm writing an email to my boss. I want to ask for a 100% raise and I also want a six month vacation to Bali, all paid for. Please help me improve my writing. So now I can then go to the top of this and go slash writing, and it's going to help me improve my email. I don't think my boss is gonna do this, but it's gonna go ahead and actually write an email. And wait, this is actually not bad. I'm gonna send this email. All right, I've sent the email to my boss. We'll see what she says. But for now, you basically can understand how important and how strong these slash commands or snippets are. I don't actually have that many. I only have a few. I have the prompt one. I have a short prompt. So it, it basically it's the exact same as the prompt one that I showed you, except it doesn't ask me any clarifying questions. Basically it just tries to infer what I actually meant. And this is usually used for smaller tasks when I don't want it to take as long and I want it to be quick and easy. I'll leave a link to a doc where I show all of my prompts in the description below. But this kind of leads me into the next point of the video, which is actually a really powerful tool that I came across. Oh, and by the way, before we move on to the next part, if you're interested in AI and machine learning, there is a ton of projects that you can get down below. Just head to learn.nextwork.org or the link in the description and you can do a bunch of them for free. Anyway, on to the next part. Now, second way you can do things is by using ChatGPT's own prompt optimizer. They dropped this with ChatGPT 5 and it's actually really, really useful. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just put in the prompt that we created here and then I'm gonna go ahead and optimize it. So what ChatGPT is gonna do now is it's gonna look through best practices based on all of its documentation and probably some own internal system prompts as well. And it's gonna go ahead and optimize this prompt. You can use this for free. You just need a ChatGPT account and you'll probably need to log in, but you can do this for free. So now you can see that it's actually gone ahead and added 30 lines and it's deleted 25 lines. So what is happening in this optimizer is you'll notice that there is these little hashtags um, or sections that are things are broken up to. And this is XML. I would think of XML as the different layers of a sandwich. So you have your objective layer, your provider, your time and privacy. It essentially just helps ChatGPT better understand all of the different layers so it can be less vague and instead more specific. It's gonna allow for ChatGPT to scan or pass through the text a lot easier and give you better responses overall. It's also gonna go ahead and add in any context that it thinks you've missed and it's gonna clean up things like your output. Obviously this was already a pretty good prompt so there's not a crazy amount of changes but this is definitely a more optimized prompt. So now we could go ahead press copy, and I could actually go back to my snippet here, go search snippets, and go and change my prompt. So I could go into prompt, go command K, edit my snippet, and change this. And now I've got a new updated snippet. Using a prompt optimizer, again, takes some time. So it is something that you're not gonna want to do all the time, probably only for more complex tasks. 
but it can really help you, especially if you're using this new slash command method that I've shown you, to improve those prompts. Now, lastly, I wanna go into something that is more specific to ChatGPT, but it's something I'm seeing across the board with things like Claude Code or some Anthropic models. So I wanna talk about this a little bit more as well. Before we wrap up the video, you may remember that router model that I talked about at the start. Now I wanna go into a little bit more detail on what that means because I believe this is gonna be something that is used across the board on different models and it's gonna become more and more important to actually understand how this works. So remember ChatGPT 5 was designed for AI agents and developers, but OpenAI as a company has two goals in mind, right? One is to give you the best results and two is to keep their costs down so that they're actually profitable. Running more complex models or models that take longer often cost more. It's just simple math, right? So for a company like OpenAI, they actually built this automatic sorter to use the best model in every single use case. So remember, there's three models, the base model, the thinking model, and the pro model. Now the router is basically gonna read through your prompt and think, ah, oh, can I get away with using the base model? Because that's the cheapest. That's, that's what OpenAI is incentivized to give you. So especially if you have a free plan, you're gonna be in auto mode the whole time and you can't actually decide which model you're using like you can on Pro. But you can actually override this manually. So let's say you don't wanna use the prompt optimizer or the slash commands. You're just trying to query something that is maybe medium difficulty and you want a good model to be able to do this. You can actually force the router to use the thinking mode. You can use this by saying phrases like, think about this more deeply, or ultra think, or think harder. And these are phrases that also work on things like Claude Code, where you're gonna actually invoke a different thinking mode that is gonna go into more reasoning. The router sees these words and is like, damn, I can't really use the base model now, so I, I guess I have to use the thinking one. So it's just a simple tip that may actually come in handy. Be careful because from what I've seen, words like this is very important or this is critical may not actually trigger the deep thinking mode. And you need to say things like think harder or think really deeply about this. These are things that are gonna help prompt that router to choose the thinking model. So for example, if I write something like, what is the theory of relativity all about? I could then press on, uh, enter and it's gonna just give me an answer straight away. You can see there's no thinking involved because there was no symbol here. But now if I write, what is the theory of relativity about? I want you to think deeply about this. You're gonna see that thinking mode is now activated. This is exactly what we want and it's gonna give us a more detailed answer compared to our first answer. See, you can see it's still thinking. Damn, it's really thinking deeply. Okay, there we go. Thought for 44 seconds. So look at this answer compared to this answer. They're very different. And this is just with a few extra words and you can get a lot better of an answer. However, if you're on a pro account like this, you can actually choose which mode you're using by just selecting this one at the top here. And that wraps up today's video. I hope you learned a few things from this video here. If you haven't done the prompt engineering project, definitely check it out, it's free, but it teaches so many fundamentals that everyone should know about prompt engineering. You can definitely do this as well. You just need to learn some of the fundamentals and from there, prompt engineering and creating prompts, regardless of the time period, is gonna be as simple as basically prompting the AI to do so. Let me know what you think about these techniques and I have many more that I use that I didn't include in this video. So if you want, I can do another video covering more things that I use on a daily basis. And I really hope this helps and you have an amazing day. Peace out.